Hi, I'm Kenneth Weidstow. I'm a professional photographer here in Colorado. Welcome to another one of my photography talks. Today I'm going to talk about the Roy Stryker project and how I'm taking it on the road. So I'm going to go to camera stores in local towns and area states near me and not so near me and I'm going to go out and take information to them and I'm going to call ahead and I've already done some of this and I'm contacting them and asking if we can use their classroom space and bring some film photographers together and generate interest in more people shooting for the project because we have six or seven people shooting for us now but we need 50 or 100 covering every state in the US and my goal is to go out there and to generate some of that interest by giving information and so much of what we do is great projects need traction they need to grow they need to get people talking about them and they need to you know get their numbers up and then once they get going there's a critical mass where I think they start to roll on their own but right now we need more we need to keep it going and not let it be like well we were posting for a little while now we just missed a month you can't miss a month with anything that's photo project wise because you need to generate that interest and it's an interesting thing because shooting documentary style is completely different than say shooting street so when you're shooting on the street you're looking for sometimes geometric patterns or funny juxtapositions Documentary photography isn't looking to be so clever. It's looking to be more genuine. So in some sense, Henry cartier Bresson would probably not be the best photographer working for us. For one thing, he was in France. And the second thing is, he was all about creating you know, art and, and form. And as much as that's important to a photograph, I was just down in New Mexico and some friends of mine were feeding their 20 month old and I was photographing them and it's not a spectacular photograph of people in a great compositional dynamism, dynam you know, dynamic kind of uh, presentation. It's, it's just real. It's got composition, certainly, but it's not like, oh, I waited for this incredible light to strike the baby in the face. And No, it's actually just their, lit, their kitchen lit by morning light, and it's about documenting what does that life look like in 2017. And if I were shooting for street, I never even would take my camera out at that breakfast. But when I'm shooting for documentary, we need pictures of people at work and at play, at home doing ordinary things. We need people not just at festivals and you know, street musicians, we need people falling asleep on a bench and people you know, literally playing outside, maybe a kid in a, with a coloring book or somebody putting their kids to bed in a sense. That's the most ordinary life element that goes into a documentary project. I think sometimes the photographs that we see on Facebook, the photographs that people post of their vacations and their, their lunch, it's almost like a sort of false sense of who we are because we're posting the things that we want to be seen as. We're posting photographs that make us look like we're having a ball and having a great time. And, that's not really our life. That's just the life that we're presenting because it's attractive. And what does it look like to be a mother who can't afford to feed her family and she goes to bed hungry while she barely gets the kids fed? What does that look like? What about somebody who's addicted to heroin and on opioids? There was a woman that I met who was the result of a knee injury from playing college sports she was put on opioids and then she couldn't get off. She said that as much as she wanted to be off of them, she had no interest in being in, on drugs. She was spending $3,200 a month on the street to get uh, heroin so that she could keep herself functional because doctors said it would take her a month to go into the hospital and get off of the drugs. And she was interested in doing that, but it would mean it would cost her her job. And she was making pretty good money that she could afford to buy the illegal drugs and to stay working. And as much as she didn't want to do that, she didn't want to lose her job. And that person doesn't fit the mold of what an opioid user looks like in my head. That's supposed to be the, the drag in the street, right? And it wasn't at all. We need to see that. And I'm, I've been asking people locally, there's an incredible statistic like Colorado opioid addiction is up 900% or something really high like that. And I have been asking people, does anybody know somebody who I can access to photograph? And nobody has come forward at all. And you know it's happening. You know it's a big problem. So 
Those are the kinds of things. What do you have access to? And it doesn't have to be a grand story like that, but even that family feeding their child, a ordinary life of a uh, single dad, single mom, a full family with a bunch of kids, people at work, people in stores, people in real life. That's what documentary photography is. And it's, if you're looking for something to photograph and you're not always sure what to photograph, documentary work gets you the ability to photograph a lot of different things in a creative way because you're not just looking for that form and geometry, you're actually looking for story and truth. And that's what the Roy Stryker Project is all about, is about showing who we really are, not the Facebook look, not the, the perfect vacation look, but the real look. Maybe the look before, you know, the photographs that I made, you know, the folks weren't even dressed in the morning, they were just in their morning pajamas or, or sweat clothes, and they didn't look like they were necessarily ready to be photographed. That's important, that's real. That's what we look like, for real. And you and I can make those photographs and we can use those to tell the story of who we are in, in the current age, just like Roy Stryker did back in the 30s. I'm going to put a PDF link down below, as well as a, a text about the photo needs that we need if you are interested in shooting for us and we really need for the film photographers. So if you're interested, please do. But I'm going to put a PDF. Another way you can really help is I'm going to take these flyers to different camera stores and photo clubs. If you know of any photo clubs or camera stores, and if you don't, even if you can just take a flyer, print it up, and put it in the coffee shop, the more we can get the word out, the more people will talk about it, the more we'll get it to grow, and then it'll take on a life of its own, and then we'll have to turn people away, which hopefully will never happen. But if that were the case, that wouldn't be the worst problem to have. All right, that's today's photography talk. Thanks so much for watching. If you're enjoying these, hit the subscribe button. If you can support, even the cost of a coffee cup a month helps a lot. Thanks so much for watching.